Uh, nice to see you and here. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining my podcast um, episode segment. Okay. Yes. Mm. It's a pleasure for me too. Yes. Like, yeah. I've listened to some uh, you've done before. Okay. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. Yeah. What What uh, was your like initial idea? So why you created it? Why I created the podcast station is so that I can be able to expand my network and reach out to people like you who I can't meet physically and interact and build um, content-driven marketing plans that can help young professionals understand their branding and business from mm -hmm. all angles within the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you good? So, um, you have some structure or it's just easy? Um, usually, okay. we, usually we just go with the flow, but okay. because I already know what I wanted to ask you, um, I wanted us to start by doing that first. So, please let everybody know who you are, what you do, what your name is, and just give a little introduction of yourself. Okay. So, I'm Yuri Poleashko. Uh, I'm from Ukraine. I'm Ukrainian. Um, I run a studio of animated videos, uh, animated explainer videos here. It's called Dar Video Animation Studio. Uh, so I have a team of 15 people uh, in the office and we do, so basically our specialization is uh, animated explainer videos made in 2D or 3D graphics. Mm -hmm. And we do the full cycle here in studio, which is uh, script writing, drawing, animation, voiceover, uh, sound design, so everything. And uh, we work with clients all over the world, uh, preferably it's Western Europe and uh, uh, North America. But basically, we have clients from almost every country. And uh, we've started as a video production like 15 years ago. And uh, we're filming uh, commercials here in Ukraine first. And uh, like around five years ago, we switched to a very trendy, uh, like this sphere, uh, animation, graphics, uh, motion design and, and everything like this. And so now we do animation only. Nice. So that's, that's great. It. That's really great. Animation is one of the biggest things in the world today because just like it's been there in the past, it's more advanced now with technology and, you know, user interfaces and, you know, there's the, there's the UXI, there's all this new gadgets that everybody's using. For like you now, for your business, how did you start? What made you want to start doing animation? What's the passion behind it? Um, yeah, you're right that it's, it's really a trending thing today and animation is used everywhere and uh, maybe like 20 or 30 years ago it was only cartoons so animation means kids cartoons today it's not <laughs> yeah uh, the boom of animation started uh, i mean as i felt it is uh, when um, it companies uh, just started to produce many uh, many software applications, uh, some startups, uh, all of these online services, etc. And all of, them, all of them require animation. So, I mean, they are the, the, the biggest customers, they, especially the companies who do some services that is difficult to explain. They need some video just to um, to understand what is so Uber comes to the market and you should understand what is it. It's not yeah. a normal taxi, right? And uh, so then that, that's what I liked. And I switched to to doing animated videos because uh, you can do it uh, like uh, de dependless on the weather, on the location, uh, with our team, as I told with our team in the office, so we do videos so odd for all kinds of industries, for all kinds of um, people, countries, languages, so everything from, uh, I don't know, military technologies to social projects, <laughs> so, so, so wide range. And it's, it's a lot of fun because animation, it's, animated videos is always something funny, something uh, interesting, some characters, some stories, yeah. so it's always some discovery. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Wow. That's a good one. Because I think with animation today, like you said, discovery, people want to learn how to do things the easy way. So using animation is kind of like a soft way of telling you how to do things without being human and, you know, forcing it. It's like when you see an animation and you can hear it has an emotional psychology attached to it. That's an entertainment, entertaining way to, uh, to give you some information. I mean, it's not always a commercial. Uh, today, what, what we do is, in many cases, it's some um, explanation, it's um, manual, it's instructional, it's motivational videos. It's, uh, you know, I had the request to, to turn books into animated stories. So it's yeah. like a way of transferring information. Okay. How long, what's the process like for animation? Let's say you have a 30 second animation clip. What's mm -hmm. the step process from the audio to the visual, to the motion, to the rendering? What's the process? Mm -hmm. Um, we have, we will be in a search of a perfect process during many years and um, like last year we came to three stages production pipeline yeah. which uh, consists of um, uh, the first stage is script writing and storyboarding so we need to approve it uh, to move forward uh, sometimes we work with the client's storyboard story or it's all scripts, sometimes we do it on our site. But in any way, it's uh, the most important part they consider because uh, basically we fix what should be told, what messages should be pronounced, and uh, what will be the future visuals. Uh, the next stage is uh, arts or illustrations. Uh, in this stage, we uh, offer the client the style, style frame. Uh, just just to show the colors and the, the style everything how it, everything will look mm -hmm. in a single frame and then we draw all the frames so basically in the end of this stage client gets uh, all the illustrations uh, drawn uh, in stand stills and also you're during the during you know, like uh, showing everything we record the voiceover okay uh, as we offer videos for different countries so we work with different voiceover talents in different countries so it's 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 in most cases remote work okay uh, and we, we just record it and the last stage is animation itself so when we take all the stills we take the voiceover track uh, combine it make everything moving adding effects transitions and in the end we add music and sound effects so uh, normally each stage uh, lasts around two two weeks. So a month and a half is uh, the normal time for production. Sometimes it's less than a month. Sometimes it's up to two months, depending on the um, complexity and the level. Okay. So pretty much a good six weeks is perfect for one animation clip. Does it does the length of the the clip matter, or it's just a storyboard that matters within six weeks? Uh, normally, uh, what matters is two factors. One is the duration of the video. Another is a level of complexity. Because when we do any when we do uh, start doing any kind of animation, we uh, show the client three levels of complexity. Okay. Which is simple, medium, and custom. And when simple is when some texts and easy objects flying or some more infographical elements, which is simple, uh, fast to be produced. And uh, medium is when you show some character stories. While the custom is when uh, complex uh, objects, complex characters, very customized characters can be uh, um, like complex backgrounds with shadows, with uh, many uh, objects, or just I don't know if uh, like I don't know, ten people dancing in in a scene, it's quite a difficult scene. Or like uh, animals in the jungle do some things, uh, like, uh, fight or something like this. That's that's difficult. 
Mm. Uh, and so we consider it custom level, which normally is required by somebody who wants to, to get some really beautiful piece of animation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I gave you the, the production timing for the medium, like medium level. So of course, we sometimes we have a rush orders, which is 60 seconds can be done in one week. But that's that's really, really crazy mode of working. <laughs> Either for us or for clients who has to be on the contact all the time to give us the feedback and so on. So when your clients give you feedback, is what's the length of time it takes after the six weeks to um, tweak the adjustments? Let's say they don't like this text or this phrase or this character or the color of the skin or the the shoes, anything that is animated, anything that has a, a very high element of surprise, how do you change those adjustments within that same framework? Uh, maybe unexpected idea, but <laughs> okay. I should say that many clients maybe think that ordering a video, you just order a video and in a month and a half you get a video and say, oh, that's, that's the video I've done. <laughs> but it doesn't work like this. Yeah. As I told you, there's stages and uh, we can't move to the next stage until the previous stage is approved. Okay. So it means that the client is also taking part in, in production, in, in giving the feedback and commenting uh, during the process. And it means that, for example, in several days after, after we have started the, the production and we do the script, we show the first draft of the script, so the client needs to give us feedback if he's happy with the script. Uh, that's why, uh, for, for this uh, reason, we provide uh, one, two or three rounds of revisions after each stage. So it's basically uh, several inputs during the production from the client. Okay. Uh, so, uh, when I said that two weeks production for, for a stage, it means that uh, one week is clear uh, our work and the other week is some corrections, implementing changes, um, understanding the feedback and so on. Okay, that's great. I think at this point, I, I've also thought about it like if, if you see artists and you see celebrities, you know, who have that animation figure, you know, installed when they're doing like promotions or ads. That's a kind of thing that I would also love to do because I've never seen myself animated. So I can only imagine the surprise people get um, when, you know, when their characters are, are defined. You know, the whole, like you said, there's 2D and there's 3D. So mm -hmm. It is the time of work with 2D and 3D, are they the same or it gets more complex when you do 3D? It also depends on the, on the script, but uh, normally 3D is uh, like 50% um, longer and 50% or even twice more expensive than 2D. So that's why I'm talking in most cases I'm talking about 2D because it's our like main most of the projects are done in 2D. It's more popular, more it's cheaper and it's like more required. Okay. So 3D animation is more specific, uh, hard, harder uh, to produce and uh, it's not required in so many cases. I mean it's more for some technical things or maybe some very very complex systems and so on yeah so when is when does a client need a 3d like when is that um demand um raised i would say it uh, goes when there is some technological pros process like um, now we are producing a video that shows how the company helps to um strengthen the banks of the river so we should show how the, the, the earth is digging and uh, some technology is applying. So some, something like this. Okay. Uh, so why don't you show something like uh, there's a new mobile application and you want to show the usage, there is no need of 3D. Uh, uh, so, so 3D is more specific, uh, like show engine working show some process, show the construction, um, I don't know, 
a car or some mechanism or maybe a new camera and how it works inside. Okay. Um, something like this. So for example, I'll just give an example off the, off the top of my head, like Apple, you know, when they're doing the new products, that kind mm -hmm. of, even if it's Xbox or PlayStation, when they're doing that first demo, is that considered 2D or 3D? Yeah, normally they, they use 3D uh, because it's more um, photorealistic, it's more beautiful, it's more closer to the real world. And that's why it's difficult to be produced. Okay. Because it, in, in many cases, 3D objects, 3D graphics looks like real objects and you can even mix <laughs> with that's real. True. That's true. Okay. Okay. Um, I think with the, with the 3D animation and 2D animation series, companies have competitive, there's a competitive market, you know, for that. So how do you, as your company, um, outreach, you know, the, your competitors when it comes to designs, some technical frameworks, like you said, you have 15 people on your team. So the storyboard, the creativity, how do you guys stay on top of that when everything is, you know, technology is advancing every day with softwares, with hardwares, updates, you know, feedback? How does that work with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. <laughs> um, the, the main reason that our business is staying uh, is, um, and I, I don't see any possibilities that technology will kill it, is that it's a really handy work. Uh, it's not only when you say drawing something, but uh, when you thinking about the, about the idea, but you communicating about the specifics of the business of, of the client's business. Uh, so it's lots of communication and uh, just for, for rich understanding for, to implement the corrections correctly and so on. So it's not difficult to draw something, I mean, but it's difficult to draw the proper thing that will work, a uh, client will like, and it will work for the business. And so what we what we are just consider our strengths is, is uh, the, we maximize the clearance of the process. So the client doesn't order something, he doesn't, he will, there will be surprise for him. Uh, there is this, the production pipeline I've described. We have the project managers who are always uh, uh, like uh, ready to provide the up-to-date information on what's happening with the project. So the client always contacts to an exact person uh, like building a relationship with this person and the person just uh, always um, on, uh, always uh, responsive, responsive even in weekends uh, even in when many clients have different difference in time and uh, so when US is a day we have night and sometimes we need to respond so we are on the wire uh, during this time and uh, uh, we try to to make it really clear uh, that uh, production is uh, understandable and uh, the, the price is is fine okay. because we, we uh, also try to work not with the direct client but with the agencies and representatives so we are looking for the companies uh, that can work with the local market and uh, we just explain them how everything works what benefits they will get we give them the, our discount uh, partnership program and establish the communication and then we just uh, work with them on a regular basis that, that, that's actually the idea so the idea is not to to it's not only to make some really quality uh, animation but also to do, to establish good relationship, uh, to prove the trust, and uh, to to be consistent. Yeah. Okay. Like in any business, actually. Right. Right. Like because with animation, it's a very sensitive part. Because if somebody loves it and you can see results, they'll always come back. Mm -hmm. as, That's right. Uh, yeah, because you always know that there's quality and you, you are assured and guaranteed that there's going to be a return on your investment at the end of the day. Yeah. That's right. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, I also want to ask you, um, I was thinking about this when you were mentioning about it, like in the times that we are in right now, you know, everybody's trying to get back on their feet. How is it like out there um, in Ukraine? And how is how is the COVID-19 um, affecting the business? Is it affecting the business at all? Or is it giving you more opportunities because there's less competition right now in the local market? Yeah, very, very actual question. So uh, the happy thing is, like good news about it, is that in six days, uh, a quarantine in Ukraine is going to finish. <laughs> ah, that's great. So we are really, really uh, waiting for this day. Uh, and uh, of course, as I guess in many countries, uh, we have total quarantine at the moment. So you can go outside, but just to the shops, something like this. Uh, you can't uh, admit parks. Uh, you can't uh, gather more than two people together and, and so on. So everybody's working from home. Mm, and uh, definitely most of the business is closed, like all the restaurants and shops, uh, except for groceries. Uh, so the, the good thing which, which happened during it is that many restaurants just reoriented to uh, delivery okay. to, the, to the apartments, which is, which is nice. Uh, they may, maybe didn't plan to do it and they did it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think in most uh, businesses uh, affected and are not happy at all. So we have even strikes of uh, entrepreneurs and small business who just uh, come to the mayor house and say, just stop quarantine because we are dying. Uh, there's nothing happening. Wow. Um, yeah, but I guess... I guess that soon it will finish. And I mean, in really six days, uh, most uh, things will start working uh, mm -hmm. and yeah, it goes for better. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, what I can say about our business, so as soon as everything started, I've sent all the workers to, the, to homes and I just supplied them with computers they didn't have and they and not so many people things changed for animation production so okay <laughs> so it's good to meet in the office but still uh, we can do all, almost all the same amount of work remotely okay that's the great thing about technology and animation <laughs> yeah wow so like right now because of how it's easy for you to work on zoom or skype or meetings, Microsoft team, all these platforms are available to us. So are there any challenges in between like working, like you said, you can do almost everything remotely, but are there any like challenges that comes to when it comes to client feedback or um, response or turnovers? How does that affect the business or does it affect the business? Mm, I, you mean our company, Animation Studio in general? Yeah. Just, um, I mean, for your company right now, as it is, what is going on? Is there any challenge that is affecting the business flow or everything is good because it's remote? Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't know what actually people feel or what they think about when they just work remotely. So I just can guess. Okay. But still, I think that people, uh, I mean, my team more... Um, used to come to me and to ask some questions. So it's like, I think it's in most companies. So just uh, employees come and they just want the solutions. They want uh, the advice that they want some point of view. And so I feel like they require this kind of communication mm. because I am okay because I control the, the digits, I control the calls, uh, the letters, so, and it's easy to control remotely, even better, because I don't have so much communication, but still, okay, I feel that they want, and they call me all the time, and we do these conferences, <laughs> online meetings, and so on, all the time, and I feel that they require it more than me. Oh. 
but uh, but in general, I don't feel that something really changed. Okay. Because when we need to make some creative solution, we just make a call and, and we just discuss it. I don't feel that we need to be in the one room. Okay. That's great because that the moment the moment you start having, you know, extended research and you have people that are working from different places, I think it also opens up creativity in some in some kind of way because now you're working from the comfort of your home so you can think a little bit better, you're not pressured by the workplace. So I think it's also good for business. And I think also with with what I've, I've heard from what you've said, I want if, if somebody like me that has never done animation before um, for myself, and I, and let's say I want to start today, what would be a good safe blanket budget that somebody should think about? Because you said it depends on the complexity, the storyboard. So if I want something that is just to kick off, that is looking very neat, clean, what is the proposed budget? It doesn't have to be exact, but what are the numbers that people have to think about when you, you're trying to get into animation? Um, I would say our, our like costs, but I, I need to say that uh, like a year ago or so, we have made a small investigation and we just asked many companies to provide the, the costs. Okay. Uh, to understand what are the costs in the world. <laughs> And uh, we found that uh, the cost for the same video can be can differ like ten or even fifty times. So, wow! That's why <laughs> that's why I'm saying so. Animation is a really handmade product, and every company that makes it uh, can just set any kind of cost they consider to be um, to be okay. Uh, we uh, consider that we are something in the middle. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know that we are not the cheapest and we are not the most expensive. So, we just made it some good balance. Uh, and also, we have the minimum cost that we take the projects, which is $900. Okay. So, $900 is some simple video. Uh, like simple package, 30 seconds. Video. Oh, and it's included. It's everything included, but it's simple. I mean, so so everything: script, uh, storyboard, drawing, voiceover, music, license music, sound effects, animation. So just everything, but uh, but really something simple. Uh, medium, or well, like medium video, uh, like in most cases. Uh, costs uh, $1,800. Okay, so that's a little... $1,800, it's a totally okay. Medium quality, in most cases, works very good. So, again, everything is included. Two rounds of revisions included. So, it's very, very popular. Uh, so, most videos we do is varying from 1000 to to 2000 and a half. Okay. Something like this. But... Of course, if you want some really custom video, like very, very beautiful, and you have another couple of months time to produce it, and it will cost like 3000 or more. If we are saying about 3D animation, so it will cost uh, a, a bit more, so up to 10000 So 3D wow. animation is something really, really picky. Wow. That's a big range from nine hundred to ten thousand. So in, the, <laughs> in that in that range, you can easily make a good impression. Uh, yeah, but but as I told, yeah, the range is big and uh, it, it's big. But I would say in most cases, uh, video around two thousand covers like all all the all, all the requests. Okay. Okay. I definitely, when, when I get my first animation ready, I will definitely call you and I'll, I'll find out so we can, you know, set something great because 2020 is a big year, you know, and everybody is trying to get more innovative and creative with their style. So like for me, I also have a fashion line. So it would be so great to see my own fashion products in an animation yeah. setup 
And well, you know, that that's something that is it's it's on my mind, but don't worry. One day I will come to you again <laughs> and I will definitely ask you. So like um because you brought up licensed music, it brought a question to mind because um I do entertainment business. And how do you guys license your music? Do you have composers? Do you um have to um grant the rights or do you get uh, how does it work? What is the flow for animation and music? If somebody like me wants to come in and say, okay, I have my own music, I want to give it to you, I want to license it, and I want to see how we can maybe to, you know, expand it. What are the criteria? What are the requirements to be eligible for that? Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say that we buy music rights like um, like maybe for a movie or something like this. So everything really works very simple. Uh, today, there are lots of websites where you can buy music and it's uh, royalty free music. Uh, so you basically buy music, like the range for such music can vary from 20 bucks to maybe 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can buy and you can use it like anywhere. I mean, the only exception, some, some special situations when our clients want to use the video on TV, in this case, the rights for the music will cost a bit, a little bit higher. It can be like up to five hundred dollars, something like this. Wow! But in most cases, up to hundred dollars, you can like choose and buy any track. Okay. Uh, we also have a composer, music composer, uh, and for some custom projects, uh, clients require composing music. So in these cases, we do it, and we just uh, pass all the rights for usage to the to the client. Mm. Okay. So as whatever actually we are, as actually we are the the only producer of the music, so we just sign the the paper for the for the client. Okay. Uh, do you usually also take submissions for music from artists or celebrities or instrumentals? Is that something that happens in animation world or no? Mm, never ha- never happened before actually wow. so I think it's it's a very extra and ordinary situation or I don't know maybe there was only one time that the client has had it, his own music and he wanted us to use it so that's, that's no problem mm. but uh, we don't actually we don't do this searching and buying from the artists okay Maybe it will work for me for some feature animation or some short animated films, but not for explainer videos. Okay. Okay. Uh, wow. I've really learned a lot today. This is this is great information because nobody tells you you can't go on Google how, how much an animation <laughs> you won't find it. I mean you'll see a few numbers, but you don't know that the steps it takes, like how you described it. So it is very important for people that want to get into animation to know what they're getting into and what they're getting out from it as well. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's great. Are there any like tips you want to give any business owner or entrepreneur that wants to do animation and doesn't know how to start? What What are the kind of guidelines you want to tell them for advice? Um, as you correctly said now, uh, animation is something when somebody faces the need of making animation, it looks like it's, everything is unpredictable, everything is unclear, many studios, what to choose and so on. And I would say uh, it's better to take time because many people consider that a good animation can be done in a week and they come and say, okay, I have a really deadline in a week and I need it. And we understand that it won't be a good project. Yeah. So. When making animation, it's good to, there's plenty of lots of studios, like in every country, in every city, like really many studios. Uh, Different costs, different quality, different approach, different creativity level. And there is no problem to just to check what they offer. I mean, most of the studios will happily explain you everything, how everything works what costs or what they can recommend for the particular business and, and everything. So, but there is no some uh, one solution because every studio is very unique, very um, custom, 
uh, has own approach to work, own portfolio, own expertise. And it's good to talk just to about five or seven different studios and to, to understand uh, who is uh, who is more willing to work with you, who can offer you something interesting, who understands your idea. That, that's it. So that's human communication. Mm. That's, wow. that's, that's the main point. I, I mean, it, as it is very like people-based business, you need to contact people. It's not an automatic solution for creating a perfect video for you. Right. It'll, always, it'll always be some people who will work for you. Just find a common understanding during the call and choose those you feel that closer to you. Okay. So once you find that one person, you have to stick to that person and at least build that trust, even if it's for a year, so that you can have the same consistent flow of media and animation quality. Because I'm sure every studio has a different quality or a different tone. So if you want to stick with the same tone, you have to keep that same momentum so that your audience is also not, you know, detouring from the main goal. Yeah, but besides of people, of course, you need to just take a look at the portfolio. Because yes. you just need to check whether you like the style they do or not. You, the people can be really great, <laughs> but <laughs> the quality can be low and vice versa. Yeah. Wow. Sometimes people do really masterpieces and it's so hard to talk to them. <laughs> Why? Because uh, artists are specific people. <laughs> 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 that is the correct fact yes <laughs> yeah wow that's that's amazing to hear because with animation today it helps you to grow it helps you to understand what you want for yourself and you can actually take real life objects and then cartoonize them if that's a word and give them like a different plot twist you know so that people can still engage and, you know, stay concentrated to what the focus of the message is. Like you said in the beginning, it's an entertaining way of spreading or giving information, you know, to all ages, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Uh, thank you so, so much. This has been a, a great topic. I, I didn't expect to hear all this, but I'm excited for people who are also listening in because every day you learn something new. And that's what I like about learning. It's everything that you have to be open to learning so that you can be able to pass the curve, you need to beat your competition, and you always have to stay on top of the game. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk. Pleasure talking. To share. Yeah, and I'm hoping that um, within the next six days, that's by this time um, next week, around this time next week, you guys will be done with the lockdown and the quarantine and things should be back to normal. Yeah, hope so. Hope so. You too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Definitely, I will keep in touch and when everything is done, um, I'll also reach out to you again and we can be able to talk further and see how we can make this more um, successful. Great, great. Thank great. you. Thank you. So, enjoy the rest of your day. You too. What time is it there? It's actually 7 p.m. Almost 7 p.m. Wow, it's 11, it's almost 8, 12 p.m. here. So about seven, eight hours. Well, I used to, as I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, then. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much again. You too. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.